Hey guys, welcome to another video. And today we're looking at capacitors, right? So capacitors are devices that are used to store electrical energy, right? And by storing electrical energy means it stores the charges that are flowing around the circuit to the capacitor in order for it to store the energy, right? Now, the symbol for a capacitor that we use in a circuit diagram are two parallel plates with space between, right? So that's how exactly the capacitor looks in real life, right? So we have two parallel plates, right, with a gap, and the gap there symbolizes the, the dielectric, right? And we soon look at that term fully, right? So how do we get a capacitor to store charge? Right? So, in a simple circuit, we have a battery supply, right? and we have a switch, and we have our capacitor. Right? So, at this point, the capacitor is not being charged because the switch is open. Right? So, after we close this switch, right, then we have electrons moving in that way. Right? So, we have electrons moving in that way. So, the electrons will push... So this flow of electrons from your battery will push the free electrons in your conductor onto the plate of plate A of your capacitor. So it takes the free electrons from our from our conductor, right, and pushes it onto the the plate of your of your capacitor A plate, right, and then. The electrons from the free electrons now from this side will actually will now be attracted to the positive plate, right? So electro the free electrons from your positive from your B plate will be attracted over now to be to the positive side of your battery, right? So now that leaves your B plate to start having positive charges, right? So this accumulation of negative charge and this removal of negative charge from A and B plate respectively, what well, will continue until this there is an electric field that's built up here, right? So because of that one side being positive, one side being negative, the electric field is being built up, right? And this electric field is what stores the charges inside the dielectric space. Right? So once that voltage, because there is a change in your charge amount, once the voltage of that reaches the same voltage as your supply, and in this case it's 10, then our capacitor is stored and fully charged. Right? So that's how your capacitor charges using an external voltage supply. Right? Now the dielectric constant it's a insulator that indicates the ability to concentrate electric flux. And what that means is these electric field lines, right? The dielectric actually brings them closer together, right? So that's the purpose of the dielectric, to ensure that these lines are closely packed together so they can actually store the electric charges and the electric energy, right? So how can we increase the capacitance of the capacitor? Right, so how can we increase in getting more energy being stored? So first, we can just make a large capacitor, right? So obviously, if we have a large capacitor, right, then that means we will create more electric field, right? So we can store more charges. Also, we can increase the area of the plate, right? So the area of the plates that's used, we increase that, right? And that will give us more charges to be stored more electrons and more positive charges to be stored on those plates so we can have more electric field for charges to be for the energy to be stored and finally we use a thinner dielectric now a thinner dielectric what that does is we're decreasing the gap between the plates for the dielectric so it actually compacts your electric flux remember the flux are the lines right so the thinner the thinner it is, the fields will come very close together and that is perfect for storing the 
energy, right? So based on, on these definitions, now we have our equations for capacitance, right? So capacitance C is equal to Q over P. We know Q is the amount of charge and P there is the voltage that is being applied, right? And also C capacitance is equal to epsilon A over D, right? So we notice A area, so that's the area of, of the plate, right? And remember, the larger the area, the larger the capacitance, because they are directly proportional, right? And then the distance now, we notice we need a third dielectric, so that means your distance between your plates need to be closely packed, right? So that they are inverse proportional. So once this is reduced, meaning we come together closely, then this will increase, right? So remember epsilon, which means the permittivity of the dielectric, and the permittivity, if the dielectric is air, the permittivity is 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12 farads per meter, right? And farad is the unit of capacitance, which is a capital F, right? And you will come across where it gives you the relative permittivity of the material, right? Some books have it as K, and I think you can see it also as epsilon R, right? So it's the same relative permittivity. So if you're given relative permittivity in a question, then you multiply it by the permittivity of air to before you can actually put that in your in your equation there, right? Now the energy that is being stored by your capacitor actually will include, right? So we can find the energy from our capacitor by using any of these equations based on the quantities that are given. So W represents the energy, and W is equal to CV squared over 2, or QV over 2, or Q squared over 2C, right? So we know that the Q represents the charge, the V represents the voltage, and C represents the capacitance. So that's how we would find the energy that is being stored by a specific capacitor, right? Now, in discharging your capacitor, all you need is just to ensure that two wires are connected to the plates of the wire, so it creates a complete circuit, right, without a battery supply, so the charges now can leave from the plate, right, and go around that circuit, right? So use up the energy that is in it, to function whatever you want it to function, right? So in the case here, so let's say we, when we store this, because we have current going in that way, if the capacitor is being discharged, current will flow the opposite direction. So that's very important, right? So charging and discharging, the current flows in opposite direction. So the current flows in one direction to charge it, and opposite direction when it is being discharged. Right? And we know the negative side that's connected to the negative side of the battery becomes a negative plate. The one that connects to the positive side becomes the positive plate. All right? So we're going to look now at the graphs that can actually show you how this charging and charging of the capacitor works in terms of voltage and current. All right, so now we have our graphs for charging and discharging. So let's look at charging first. So remember charging your capacitor means that you're starting from the capacitor being no voltage, right? So there's no voltage applied to your capacitor as yet, right? So we start at zero, right? So as the time goes by, your voltage of your capacitor increases, right? So we have an increase until it becomes constant. So this constant is when it reaches the voltage of your supply. Right? So we get that. So the equation that links that would that links charging or discharging voltage would be V equals V naught E to the power of negative T over R C. Now R C in some books you would have meaning time constant. Right? And now I normally use the equation to help to tell the students how why the graph is shaped like this. Right? So E there represents the exponential, and exponential graphs normally have is a curve that actually becomes constant over a period of time. 
right? So that shows us that that's the reason why it's a curve, right? So for current now, right? Then we're charging. So the current going around the 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 circuit, sorry, is going. It starts from a max, right? So it's going through your capacitor, starts from a max. You're storing those energies, so you're reducing the flow of current each time, right? So until it's fully charged, where current stops, right? So that's why this shape is like that. So you start from high current because you have no charge energy stored as yet. So each time you store the energy, the resistance gets high, so no current will pass through your resistor when it's fully charged. And then discharging, right? So in discharging, your capacitor is fully charged, right? So it has a voltage. So it's going now supplying things with its energy and voltage. So if the voltage decreases when time increases. And for current, right, we notice this here actually is on the next plane of your, your graph. And the reason for this is remember, we charge with one direction and we discharge current in the next direction. So that's the purpose why it's on this side, the negative side of current, right? So the negative current just means it's opposite direction to our charging current. So we start off, right? Because the capacitor is fully charged, so we connect it to anything, starts to flow charges now. So current is high initially, right? And over a period of time, using the capacitor, it reduces energy that it has. So therefore, it starts to get less and less current flowing from it, right? Until it reaches zero, where it's fully dead, right? So that's it for capacitor guys and next class I will look at using these equations to calculate some unknown quantities. Alright, so I hope you guys understand this and see you guys next time.